Live, I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder, and uh, thanks for joining us on this day before Thanksgiving. We've got the folks from Mott & Chase, Kim Marion, she's a superstar over there. We're going to talk about real estate, what's going on in the market. There's a lot of national reports, and there was new data out in Rhode Island late last week that uh, gives some insight into where the market is now and where it may be going over the next uh, few months and into all the way into next year and the year beyond. So, Kim, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Josh, thanks for having me. Okay, let's go into the holiday season. I wanna start with the holiday season. There's sort of this, I don't know if it's a myth, I don't know if it's a reality, is that sort of nothing happens in real estate between about now and some mythical time in January or February. What's the story there? Yeah, so that's really funny. People think about real estate, spring, summer, fall, we're all packing up our signs and we're putting away our winter boots and, you know, sitting around the fire with our family for the winter. But realtors right now and buyers and sellers are so active still. Um, it's going to be a very busy winter. In fact, National Association of Realtors recently said that this winter of 2021 into 2022 could be our busiest winter for sales and purchases since 2006, which is amazing because we've had already this couple of years of a very strong market. And if you are, uh, so we're talking about holiday house shopping essentially right now. Right. And it is, it is a thing, it is a real thing. Folks are out uh, in force looking at properties. Is it different holiday shop, uh, shop house shopping? Do you have to sing carols? Do you have to do <laughs> mistletoe? Like what's, what is the difference? <laughs> The difference right now is uh, that I'm I'm singing carols only on on high demand, so keep the the carols are on the down low. But um, the market right now is different. I, what's happening is we've reached this. It's kind of like so. What to expect if you're thinking about listing? First of all, I would say this is a great time to list because uh, winter shoppers are serious. No one wants to be out in the cold, uh, potential bad weather, or looking for a property. So if they are, they mean business. We are also at a point with house values, and we didn't touch on it yet, but you do every time, so I know you will. Uh, median house values, 380,000 or so, and that's across the nation, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's up 9% from last year. So where I'm going with this is, we are at a point with house pricing and house values and sales numbers that is probably topping out. So if you are thinking, well, I'm gonna wait till spring, maybe values will go up another 5%, experts are saying that's probably not likely. We're at that point where we've really pushed values so high that we're probably not gonna see another huge increase in the spring. So right now, people are out shopping. I've made a couple of great deals for buyers because the competition is a little bit less in the, in the, for the buyers, um, that we put things under contract pretty, pretty easily. So is there this sense though, and, and let's talk buyers, do buyers feel like, oh, there's no inventory, I have to wait till spring? And then on the flip side, do sellers feel like, uh, I want the maximum price, I want the maximum crowd, I want these people bidding against each other, I'll feel cheated if I only get two offers over asking price. So first, I'll say buyers are seeing the competition's a little lower right now. So they're excited. I've had a couple of buyers that had taken a break and then we found a few houses that popped up that didn't sell in a weekend has, has been the case. And they said, you know what, we're, maybe we're in, maybe we're back in. And two of those people I put under contract and they were in the under 400 range. So that's been a super challenging market. Um, and we were able to, to put two houses under contract. You know, buyers are really, uh, pardon me, sellers are really trained right now. And it's, it's, it's sort of like a spoiled child in a way because everybody putting their house on the market that couldn't sell in 2018 or 2017 sold higher than they ever dreamed in the last couple of years. So everybody that puts a house on feels like we're gonna, you know, we're gonna go way over. There are gonna be multiple offers. And in some markets, definitely still true. You know, the East side is one of those markets. You know, Portsmouth, Newport, Little Compton, there's and parts of Warwick. There's uh, even though there's less competition, the houses are still selling it with multiple offers. I feel like we're getting to a point where if you're if you're pricing your house 
too high, buyers are now really getting irritated and they're saying, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. We know what this is. We're at the highest market. We're going to we're going to wait. And I have seen I have seen price reductions. I, I really want to tell people to really work with your realtor and look at the comps and price well. You will probably still go over if you're in a super active market. But if you price at the price you expect to sell at, then you're really going to scare people away, even the really serious buyers that are out right now. And they are out right now. So let me let me approach this a slightly different way. Um, the median, I'm going to go to the numbers. Median yeah. household, uh, single family, was at 390 in August. It hit yeah. down to 385, I want to say, in September. Then October numbers came out late last week. It was down to 377. So not not a big yeah. decline from 390 to 377. But it is yeah. an indicator that maybe we've hit the top of the market. Two months down, That's right. I know the inventories are different in September and October than they are during the summer, but, but this is a little bit of an indication that this thing's not going to continue to rocket like it did in 20 and, and most of 21. So exactly. if, if, if I'm thinking about selling and I've been pushing it off because of COVID, I've been pushing a lot off because I want premium pricing, I really need to start thinking about this now because I could miss out on the top of the market. You could have, they could absolutely. Sellers that don't list, um, I mean, obviously winter's a little more challenging, but your house is going to sell. I promise you, your house is going to sell if you list it right now and you're going to get this. We're still in this top dollar zone. If you wait till spring, your house is going to sell. I don't think we're going to get a lot more money in spring. And I don't personally think that the experts are also saying that something else is happening. And um, and you know all about this, Josh, M mortgage rates are going to start creeping up. So in November, we were around 2.89, just under three. Um, we're expecting rates to go into the threes, low threes in 2021. And there's some indication that by 2022, we could be at four percent. I know that anybody who's been around knows that 4% is still a very low number. But if you're a buyer and you're borrowing money, you want to borrow it at 3%, not 4% or or even even higher. So in the 80s, we were at maybe 10 or 12 or 15%. And then 10 or 12 years ago, probably 8 or 9%. This is still historically low. It's a great time to borrow money. It's like, I want to say free money, but it, it's almost like free money in the big picture of where the you know, where rates can go. And, you know, a good economy will have a higher interest rate typically. So it's maybe it's a good sign that we're seeing the rate increase. But if you're buying, now's a great time to, or refinancing if you haven't already done that, now's a great time to take advantage of the rate. If you're selling, definitely be aware that we have hit top numbers. And I don't think, and experts don't think it's going to be another year of, you know, three, five, eight percent increases uh, in values. We just has to top out. It has yeah, to tell. And listen, month over month, uh, month to month, year over year, uh, we saw 10, 15 percent uh, increases in 21 over 20. I mean, it's just right. remarkable. It's, it's enormous. Yeah, enormous. And, uh, you know, when we launched Go Local in 2010, the median household price was under 200,000. Now we're talking about 400,000, and wages haven't increased uh, anything just close to that. Yeah. Think about that from the perspective of being a buyer in this market and what it costs for a first time home buyer, almost $400,000 is a lot of money. You've got a little family, maybe one or two kids, you're just starting out, maybe one person stays home. Even if both folks are working, a $400,000 house was, was typically a second, you know, a person's, a family's second purchase when that you know that 200 under 300 range was was more typically a first house it's 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 a challenge right now yeah it's it's a it's a very interesting period of time to watch the market right now now and i can't remember who it was i read it so early this morning new york times wall street journal bloomberg somebody um said listen 2022 is going to begin to flatten out by yeah. 2023 prices are going to be stable they're going to be high but they're going to be stable. Your thoughts right. on that? Is that the right? Do you agree with that analysis? So I'm not an economist, but I will say that logic would tell me that you reach a point that you, if you can't, you just can't continue to inflate, and we're there. 
and interest rates are going to have to go up as the economy gets stronger and it indicate you know indicators seem like the economy is getting stronger so when you look at the big picture that makes sense to me again i do i do look to the experts for the the deep leadership on where the economy is going but i definitely feel like we are seeing it I see it every day in this business. You see it every day because I know you're a market junkie. The numbers can, they're getting to that point where we just can't ask for more values. The houses are going to stop appraising. It's it's just going to, it's going to roll backwards. So if you're thinking about selling, this is a great time. And spring will, will be another great time. Just cautionary, price it right. And you will, um, and you will likely go over or at least get asking depending on your market. Yeah, I mean, the prices, I saw a house the other day, I won't disparage the individual home, uh, yeah. but, I, but I looked at it and peeked at it, I'm like, that is a really awful house. And it was $600,000. I mean, it's just like, mind-blowing. It, it wasn't yeah. on the water, it wasn't near the water, it wasn't in any place special, you know, did the 360 look, you know where the street is, all those things, yeah. where the community is. And you go $600,000, oh my God, this is crazy. Sometimes we're um, sometimes as agents we give all the information that we can and and there's a lot of uh, a lot of comps and a lot of looking at what sat on the market what sold immediately in your neighborhood and um, a seller has in mind a number that they want based on a number that they want and so and we have to go with it and we we do typically say I do typically say uh, if this is the number you want let's try it and. It's, it's not the advice I'm giving you, but I will support this decision. Let's try it for a couple of weeks and see where we go. But the best way to go on the market and get your number is to be coming on at market value. People see it, they understand the number, and then you get competitive bids. So, I mean, that's just the best way to go on the market. But everybody, um, you know, people have their own ideas and we work with them. So the last question is, you know, as you look at where we are now, <laughs> Excuse me. The day before Thanksgiving, um, oh. we've had a wild year. Uh, yeah. It's been a remarkable string of almost, you know, nonstop 24 months of up and up and up and up. If 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 I'm thinking um, that I really just can't wait to buy any longer, I've got to get someplace. We're paying $2,500 a month in rent in a, That's true. In, you know. A, a regular apartment in Providence. Um, uh, how do I take advantage of maybe this flattening and be don't be that couple, that person who gets six different properties, their offers rejected? What do they need to do to be ready to take advantage of maybe a slightly different reality than what we've had over the past 24 months? Yeah, so the, the, I feel like the advice is is solid and it's kind of the same. Um, be pre-approved. Uh, be ready to get off the couch and, and literally get to the house immediately. Um, there's still competition, although there, it, although it's definitely slowed a little bit for the winter. Be ready to get out, make an offer, make a strong offer. You know, I, we've talked so many times, you know I'm not a big fan of giving away all of the safeties of an inspection and those things, but you can do a modified inspection. There's, there's work with an agent because getting into the house fast is really going to be your key and making a good, strong offer. Being ready is is the most that you can do. And right now, as I said, uh, there are fewer buyers, but the buyers that are out there are serious and they know that they have a real advantage right now not to have five or six or, or 12 people uh, beating them at the door. I was on the east side, I saw the most adorable house and I was surprised that my clients and I were the only one walking through. I'm sure the agent had a busy day, but if it had been over the summer or a year ago, there would have been a line of 15 people out the door for sure. Yeah, are the balloons ever coming back for open houses? I've not seen a balloon on an open house sign in you know, years. It's got to be so the funny. balloon industry. That is so funny that you say that, but when you think about it, they're so bad for the environment that, I mean, that we, we don't want balloons anymore. We want to protect the environment because those balloons fly off and then they end up in a bird nest somewhere or floating around in the water. So that's a conscious decision that our brokerage made, I don't know, probably maybe almost three years ago to just to stop with the balloons. And I often drive by my sign thinking if I could just get something flowing in the wind over there, but I know it can't be a balloon because if it blows off, 
I can't, we don't want to be responsible for Maybe bad environments. Maybe those giant system. gorillas that they put on used car <laughs> dealerships, right? No I need a blow up Sotheby's gorilla. sign. Can you imagine? They kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, kick thank you out. as always. So much appreciate it. Um, and uh, hope you have a great Thanksgiving with your family. And uh, always appreciate your insights. For, for everybody else, we'll have Jennifer Lawless, the chair of the political science department from the University of Virginia. Hopefully those Providence College fans, UVA beat Providence College last night, won't hold that against the chair. Um, <laughs> but she'll be talking about what's going on in Washington, D.C. and all the national politics. And then at, this afternoon, we'll have Dr. Michael Fine. He'll be talking about, the former director of health will be talking about the increase in uh, COVID numbers, what the implications are, and how bad an upswing we may have this winter. The numbers are moving upward in some categories, and usually that triggers the other numbers to go up. Transmission rate cases up. Later on, hospitalizations have a tendency to move forward. Everyone stay safe. If you haven't gotten vaccinated, do it. If you haven't gotten your booster shot, do it. I got my flu shot and my booster shot on Friday. Yes, Saturday was not my favorite day, but I am healthy and uh, feel much better about my level of protection to stay healthy this winter. Thanks, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.